Does sunscreen SPF actually matter? Lather me up, boys. Hour two. <gasps> No. 90 did the worst. Nothing is consistent. You're right, nothing is consistent. At least in your experiment. And you see, that right there is the problem. The problem that I'm gonna solve today. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Style Theory, the show that quite literally is putting its skin on the line in the name of science. As we start to wind down the summer months, people are flocking to the beaches, the pools, their backyards to capture every last bit of the sun's rays before we all return to the eternal twilight that is fall and winter. Of course, if you're gonna be out in the sun to try to catch the last remnants of vitamin D, you're best suited to lather on some sunscreen to prevent roasting like a lobster, right? Uh, well, not everyone thinks so. I'm sure we all have at least one person in our life who just doesn't believe in sunscreen. My Mom, for instance, famously doesn't think that sunscreen works, and her upgrading to an SPF 8 was a huge moment in her character arc. But she's certainly not alone in thinking that. According to one study, 11% of Americans wear sunscreen every day, but a whopping 46% never wear sunscreen at all. Of course, making your own choice to not wear sunscreen is one thing, but it becomes entirely different when you start telling others to follow your lead. If you're wearing sunscreen, you're literally putting chemicals all over your body and then laying in the sun. This is why I stopped wearing sunscreen, because if I put a bunch of chemicals into my skin and then I lay out into the sun, it's like baking chemicals into my skin. Can I just say that I love the fact that she says this in front of a pool full of chlorine, a chemical compound, which helps keep the water behind her clean. You know, H2O, another chemical compound. But all joking aside, I kind of get where they're coming from. Looking across these videos, the overwhelming complaint stems from the large quantity of hard to pronounce chemicals that are put into our sunscreens that are foreign to the average consumer, specifically octocrylene and avobenzone. Here's the thing though, both of those have been approved for use by both the F FDA and the European Commission as being safe to use. In addition, while a recent study did find that there is some absorption of these and other sunscreen ingredients into the bloodstream after application, the study also directly pointed out, and I quote, these findings do not indicate that individuals should refrain from the use of sunscreen. No, the real threat that sunscreen seems to pose is less directed at us and more at marine wildlife. According to the National Park Service, 14,000 tons of sunscreen enter coral reefs every year. Coral reefs are super important to the health of marine organisms often serving as the literal home for hundreds of aquatic friendos. They don't call coral reefs the rainforests of the ocean for nothing. There's now an outcry from environmental sciences that some of the ingredients in sunscreen are damaging the already fragile ecosystem. The concern for coral has actually become so widespread that the state of Hawaii began banning sunscreen that contained the chemicals linked to coral damage. As a result, sunscreen manufacturers are rushing to try and find alternatives that are compliant with regulations, using more natural minerals like zinc oxide. So on one hand, we have science telling us that sunscreen sunscreen use is both safe and necessary for human bodies. But at the same time, we have evidence that suggests that it might be damaging our aquatic ecosystems. And then you have the whole other crew of people saying that they use natural solutions instead. I never use cancer cream. Whenever I'm in the sun, I use organic coconut oil to hydrate my skin. And then all of that came to a head when I saw that video from the cold open from Tyler Blanchard, one of Arac's crew, looking at different SPFs of sunscreen. And the results were saying that sunscreen just doesn't work, or to question your sunscreen, or to doubt what it's doing. And usually, I really like Tyler's videos. He's one of Eric's crew, and I think all of those guys are doing some of the coolest work in the YouTube space right now. But gotta say, he didn't use a control. And the sunscreens were all different. And I just started to internally scream as I saw that experimental design and it going super viral. Hence, this video. Do sunscreens actually work? Are there safer alternatives? Do the online hacks work? Does SPF matter? I wanted to test it all. So we designed, and then redesigned, and then redesigned a third time a scientific experiment that would finally answer all of our questions about sunscreen. And we have the answers, but let me tell you, they're far from the answers that I expected. At first, we thought that this one was gonna be easy. Just buy a bunch of sunscreen and lay out in the balmy North Carolina sun for two hours, exactly like Tyler did for his test. But unlike Tyler, we were a bit more careful about how we chose our sunscreens. To make sure our results were as reliable as possible, we got a low, medium, and high SPF in each of three different popular consumer brands, Banana Boat, Sunbum, and Neutrogena. We even did our best to ensure that the SPFs were consistent across those brands, 35, 50, and 70. We also wanted two extremes, an extreme high and an extreme low. That got us a four in Hawaiian Tropic and a hundred in Banana Boat. And that's not all. We also wanted to test price point. Would more expensive or fancier brands of sunscreen perform any differently? So we packed the family into the car, cranked up the tunes, and went to the one store we knew we could find overpriced sunscreens with insane markups, Sephora. So we need to acquire some fancy sunscreen to get the true range. We've got some low tier, we've got some mid tier. Now we need some expensive stuff. I believe this makes it our first trip to Sephora. 
for style theory, which I think makes it official that we are now a beauty and fashion channel. That's it. That's We're it. going to Sephora. And who oh boy, I knew that Sephora was going to have that expensive stuff, but I was not prepared for the insanity that was their pricing logic. This one costs less than this guy right here. It has a higher SPF. It works longer. 80 minutes versus 40 minutes, so double the time. Yeah, but this is a gel. So there's a high premium put on sunscreens that don't uh, show up on your skin, that mm. don't leave like a white sheen on mm -hmm. your face or on your skin so that you can just be dewy. And so this one is a gel and it's supposed to specifically go on sheer and totally scentless on all skin types. Hey, fun fact, turns out you can get away with charging double the price for something that's less protective but is clear and odorless. Score. We also learned that luxury brands aren't immune from using wacky gimmicks to sell their effectiveness. It has something called wet force and something called heat force. Oh man, wet force and heat force? It's like the Power Rangers of sunscreen. We are definitely paying Power Ranger prices. We left with a Super Goop 40 and a Shiseido 50. Then to round out our sunscreen set, we wanted to include a mineral formulation, one without all the extra chemicals that everyone's so concerned about to see if that possibly made a difference. And just when you thought it was impossible to rub any more substances into my body, we wanted to test some of the anti-sunscreen hacks. Whenever I'm in the sun, I use organic coconut oil to hydrate my skin. We went with the coconut oil, but we also tried avocado because we saw that come up in a lot of internet blogs. And lastly, we tried mayonnaise. For the memes. Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, it's not. But you know what? Maybe it's sunscreen. We're about to find out. I can feel this is very sweaty back here. I'm glad our team isn't doing this because this is this is someone you love, man. Find someone in your life who will rub a series of sunscreens across your sweaty back. And For the content. Yeah, for the content. Hashtag life goals. Two hours of meetings frying in the 100 degree North Carolina sun wound up being much more intense than I realized. Solving FNAF while testing sunscreens. That, my friends, is how you multitask. After dragging my hot, sweaty body into the pool to cool off, avenge me. It was time to analyze our results. And here they are. And in case you need any help deciphering those results, here's a handy diagram to overlay what sunscreens corresponded to what parts of my back. And immediately you can start to see some really interesting trends here. Right? Y you see it? No, you're not seeing anything? Well, good, because there's apparently nothing to see. I was dumbfounded because scientifically this didn't make any sense. Right there, smack in the middle of my back, we left a control. A patch of skin with no lotion on it. And it went unchanged. A result that makes no sense when you zoom out and see this hot red portion of my back down here that I missed while covering the zone outside the realm of the test with SPF 50. But why? What happened? Well, turns out that my sweaty back wasn't just ruining Stephanie's day, I think it was ruining our experiment as well. My best guess here is that all the sweat on my back might have contaminated the test results, mixing into an unholy soup of lotion that protected my back, but ultimately burned the data. But that wasn't all that failed us in the first round. We also realized that there was an issue with the sun. While I stayed perfectly still, the sun, you know, moved, which created an uneven toasting across my back. So we were left with two options. We could scrap this episode and say, oh, we tried. Or we could head back to the drawing board, broaden our understanding of sunscreen, and salvage the theory. Looking at the runtime, I think you can tell which option we chose. Also, this is a great time to mention, don't try this at home. Seriously, do not. Leave the exposing yourself to potentially harmful radiation to the professionals or us idiot YouTubers. But that left us with two major problems to solve. How do you control the sun and your own sweat? I'm type A and not even I have that much power. Well, in an effort to not make the same mistakes twice, we decided to change up the experiment a bit. When you can't have the sun come to you, why don't you go to the sun? The suntan city that is, baby. Day number two, basically what we found was that all my back looked largely the same because the sweat just kind of made everything into a suntan lotion soup. We need an even tan across my body. We're going to the tanning beds. The thought process here was that we would be able to get a consistent even tan across every square inch of my body, all while not sweating because the beds are equipped with fans and things designed to keep you cool. The beds are also more time efficient. According to the workers there, 12 minutes in some of these beds is the equivalent to three hours of sun exposure. So if we really wanted to test how sunscreen works under extended intense sun exposure, this was gonna be it. But as I walked into the unfamiliar world of the tanning salon, I realized I might have flown a bit too close to the sun, or more accurately too close to the light bulbs simulating the sun. Immediately I was asked about what sort of bed I was looking for. They had four separate options, each labeled by their speed. Fast, faster, fastest, and instant, which literally fry cooks you in 12 minutes. And that's barely an exaggeration. These machines have safety ratings like I'm hopping on the world's deadliest roller coaster. Features a voice guide that provides you with information on the control operations being carried out while you are tanning. Of course, this is only if you wanted to. 
you can turn this function on. And each one came with their own different mixture of UVA and UVB light. Uh, what? Then there were dozens of tanning enhancers costing hundreds of dollars. It felt like I was dropped into a foreign country where I didn't speak the language. So I panicked. I just blindly picked some stuff. Once I was alone in my tanning room, I whipped out my trusty Game Theory duffel bag, available on theorywear.com, filled with all the lotions and hacks that I needed to finally end this educational but exhausting sunscreen debate. Now all I needed to do was tape up my grid, lotion up, and lie down. I mean, we'd controlled for everything at this point. What could possibly go wrong? So here we go. It's activated. I gotta go. Bye. Oh. Unbeknownst to me, I had five minutes to prepare myself before the thing fired off. Apparently they don't expect their typical clientele to take an hour bisecting their body with medical tape and then smearing 13 different lotions and three separate condiments across their skin. They will be hearing about that on their next Yelp review. In the end though, what it meant was that yet again, we had ourselves a bust. So Matthew's come out a bronze Adonis. Oh, certainly not. It caught me completely off guard. Oh no! And so I'm taping myself. <laughs> As it ignites, no suntan lotion. Oh no. By okay. the time I was in the bed, I had five minutes of my ten minutes left. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, you're not fooling me three times. Though we were defeated, we finally had ourselves a plan of attack. This time, my body would be gridded up in advance, with each segment already filled in. Yes, that would mean I mildly smelled of guacamole and pina colada when I spoke to the tanning booth operator the next day, but no, I didn't worry about that, because I'm assuming she's experienced weirder. Also, by pre-gaming my lotions, that would give me a chance to absorb it into my skin for about ten minutes, something that the back of the bottles recommend in the instructions. Lastly, we decided to expand our range of products to include one of those ultra expensive lotions that they sell you at the tanning salons. These luxury tanning lotions are designed to get you that crispy butterball on Thanksgiving Day complexion and will run you, get this, $250 a bottle minimum. MINIMUM! I decided to go with the sensible route and choose to buy one of the single use packets without any bronzer inside so as not to affect the results. It was much more affordable at a mere 25 bucks for a single use packet nearly as much as all of our Sephora options. We're getting educated. This yeah. is an educational journey for all of us that should have should have not been this much of a curve. How hard can it be to slather it on and then lay it on the sun? This is all showcasing how the TikToks and shorts and videos that have been out there right now probably have not done this accurately, no. right? Like, I don't think anyone has actually thought about, like, sun position and full exposure and sweat and, and how long is it soaking in. So I think tomorrow, We'll have everything that we need. We'll know everything. We know the different types of UV light. We know the beds. We know the mixes. All of this stuff. So we can finally get definitive evidence about whether or not sunscreen is actually going to do anything. Who knew it would be this hard? I did not expect this one no, this to be is, nearly this hard. I thought hard. this was going to be a really easy one. So, with our plan set, all I had to do was spend the rest of the day doing as much research as I possibly could about sunscreens, UV light, and tanning beds until I felt comfortable enough to head out for our third and final attempt. You see, the tanning salon really threw me for a loop when they started to talk about the four different bed types and how they each had different mixtures of UV light, which made me finally realize, hey, maybe I should have done some more research before jumping into this experiment, which is exactly what I finally did. As you're probably already aware, the sun produces ultraviolet or UV light. This light is invisible to our naked eyes, but it's not invisible to our skins. When UV light hits your skin, specialized cells called melanocytes release the dark pigment melanin to the rest of your skin cells, giving you that trademark tanned color. Of course, how much melanin's in your skin by default leads us to the wide spectrum of skin colors that we see throughout the world, which seems like a good opportunity to acknowledge I am only one person. My skin obviously does not represent even a fraction of the people out there, so let it be known, your results with sunscreen will probably vary a lot. But then, what is sunscreen supposed to do? Well, that ultimately depends on the type. Chemical sunscreens, your typical lotions and sprays, are absorbed into the skin and act as another line of defense to absorb UV light just like melanin does. On the other hand, mineral sunscreens like zinc oxide sit on top of the skin, acting as a shield, reflecting UV light back into the world before it can penetrate into your skin. In either case, sunscreen gives your melanocytes just enough time to produce the melanin needed to protect your skin from damage. If you forget to apply sunscreen or if you stay out for too long, your skin becomes overwhelmed and that UV radiation starts to literally destroy your skin cells. The best case scenario for that, the UV light damages the DNA of your cells to such a degree that it just dies. Your immune system then rushes blood and immune cells to the damaged area, causing it to become inflamed and red. You heard that right, the itchiness and redness of a sunburn, it's not caused by the sun literally burning your skin, it's from your own body trying to heal itself. Really puts a different spin on that summer glow, doesn't it? But of course, there are worse options. In very rare instances, instead of the UV light killing the skin cell outright, it instead mutates the skin cell's DNA 
turning it to cancer. And all of that is without mentioning the wrinkles, sunspots, and premature aging that come with sun overexposure. So how then does a tanning salon try to mimic all of this? Well, much like how skin types are not all the same, not all UV radiation is the same either. You see, the UV radiation that we experience here on Earth from the sun comes in two different flavors, UVA and UVB. UVA, which makes up about 95% of the UV light that we take in from the sun, penetrates deeper into the skin. UVA is connected to some types of skin cancer, but is the kind that's most associated with skin aging, since it damages the collagen and elastin that keeps your skin tight and perky under the surface. UVB, meanwhile, which makes up the other 5% of the sun's light, is the much more dangerous kind. It mainly impacts the upper layers of your skin, and it's the one most associated with burns and more types of cancers. As a result, sun protection factor, or SPF, that little number on the side of your sunscreen, it only measures how well it protects you against UVB rays, not UVA. So you could put on an SPF 100 all day every day and that doesn't mean that you're protected at all from the aging and cancerous side effects of UVA. If you want a sunscreen that, you know, protects you against both, look for the phrase broad spectrum on your sunscreen. That way you know it protects against the burning and cancer causing UVB and the aging and wrinkle causing UVA. And you see, it's this balance of UVA and UVB that I hadn't really considered when I first got to the tanning salon. Different beds with their different bulb makeups all delivered different relative amounts of these two lights, with beds ranging from the basic model and a 90-10 UVA to UVB split, all the way up to the instant beds with the skin crackling 50-50 split. So for our experiment, I decided to opt for four straight days using a mix of their fastest bed, which had a 70-30 divide, and the instant bed with its 50-50. That way I could really get a test of how well these sunscreens were fighting back against the most intense versions of these UVB rays. So finally armed with my newfound doctorate in sun protection studies, and after pre-applying our wide range of sun products, I bravely returned to the tanning salon and spent the next several days collecting more data. And I gotta be honest, I felt like I was a baked potato trapped inside some sort of sci-fi stasis tube, with dozens of controls and misters and fans and voice controls that talked to me. What's more, the instant bed was entirely flat acrylic, which meant that my exposed body was just awkwardly lying there, like I was a piece of paper on some giant human Xerox machine. That said, for as strange and foreign as it was inside my little space, tube, the warmth of all the lights it was actually really nice and comforting. Honestly, if I didn't know the amount of skin damage that I was actively throwing myself into, and if the machine didn't warn me of my imminent death multiple times on every square inch of the device, this would have been a really pleasant and relaxing experience. Sadly, I did know all those things, so all that relaxation potential was ultimately wasted. Seems like in this case, ignorance might be bliss. Not necessarily positive skin health, but at least bliss. What foolishly started as a two-hour experiment, in the end ballooned to a week of tests, two failed trials, four days laying in a human zero Xerox machine and 14 equivalent hours of sun exposure. But finally, finally we had it, and the results were incredibly clear. So before I show you what we discovered, I hope you take a moment to appreciate what we had to do to make sure that you, the viewer, had the information necessary to make informed sunscreen decisions. Far from me to tell you what to do, but feels like I deserve a click of that subscribe button. How many other channels in your sub feed are gonna subject themselves to high doses of UV radiation in the name of science? I didn't think so. Anyway, without any further delay, let me show you what all the sunscreen and sunlight light did to my body. Here are the final results. All right, so here we are. Three failed experiments and five suntans later. Let's see where we net it out, shall we? This is awkward, me disrobing in front of a camera like this. Should we be saving this for the OnlyFans? Only theories? Only theories! The theories that are too hot for YouTube. What is this channel? I love this channel so much, it's so dumb. But it's answering really important life questions, like, hey, does sunscreen work? So enough uh, of me delaying the inevitable. Let me take off my shirt in front of this camera and in front of my employees. This is, this is great. Here we go. I love how, like, nasty the tape has gotten after, like, three or four days of just having it on here. So, I mean, it seems pretty definitive as far as where I'm standing. This is your control right here. Pretty obviously, everything around it, not tan and not red and angry at me. So it says that suntan lotion is clearly doing something. Honestly, I think what I'm most surprised by with this is every square worked, which is shocking to me. This one right here, this is the seven SPF, literally nothing. Unchanged. Fantastic. This one right here. This is actually the suntan lotion that we got from Suntan City that is supposed to make you like look darker and get the most out of your suntan booth session. Also, unchanged. That's how they get the money out of you, clearly. Everything else. Gels? Totally fine. The little expensive chapstick? Worked. Cheap? Worked. Expensive? Worked. It all worked. You know what didn't work, though? Any of the TikTok hacks. Mayonnaise? Eh. Guacamole? Eh. Little boy in the middle there? That's coconut oil? Yeah. 
not a whole lot. It's also worth calling out the fact that like, hey, some of these were minerals. Most of these had like the uncomfortable chemicals that people can't pronounce. They all work fine. But the ones that had minerals that didn't have any of those fancy scientific ingredients, yep, totally fine. Across the board, it seems pretty darn definitive. Sunscreen actually protects your body. Doesn't matter the SPF, doesn't matter the ingredients, it is there. Don't use mayonnaise, that's dumb. I wasted a week of my life and probably gave myself like, skin cancer or something to prove to you that sunscreen works. You're welcome, internet. Now can I get this tape off my body? So what is our big takeaway from this long, arduous experience? It turns out that stuff that we've been rubbing onto our bodies for years and has gone through rigorous experimentation, it does indeed protect your skin from sunburn. Shocking, I know. Science works, who would have guessed it? But obviously we learned way more than just that. One, in terms of just pure visual appearance, the expensive brands did not seem to provide any more protection than your typical banana boats of the world. If you have a need or desire to have sunscreen that goes on clear or odorless, then sure, by all means spend the extra money, but otherwise, any brand should be doing just fine for you. Secondly, we found that there wasn't a strong correlation to SPF and the tan that we got. Honestly, I expected there to be a bit more of a gradient across my body, with lower SPFs failing and letting in at least some of the rays. I mean, each session in the tanning booth was meant to be the equivalent to three hours. I would have expected some of the lower SPF contenders to lose some level of effectiveness over that time, giving us at least some level of tan, but no, they seem totally okay. Heck, even the fan fancy tanning lotion. Not sunscreen, but tanning lotion that Suntan City sold us did an excellent job of protecting our skin, which kind of feels like it defeats the stated purpose of the product a bit. Then again, they do want you coming in multiple times to get your ideal tan, so maybe this is more of a benefit to their profit line than your tan line. That said, if you are going to be spending any prolonged time out in the blazing sun, look for a sunscreen that is broad spectrum. That way you're protected against both UVA and UVB rays. And if you're really concerned about how chemicals and sunscreens are affecting your body and or the environment, then it seems like you can absolutely switch to a more mineral-based sunscreen that uses stuff like zinc oxide. They're proven effective both by the FDA and my chest, and they don't get absorbed into your skin. Regardless of the sunscreen though, be sure to read the packaging on your particular brand for how early and often they recommend reapplying the product. They develop those directions so people don't get hurt and they don't get sued, so I'm assuming their instructions are going to give you a pretty safe bet. Finally though, perhaps the biggest takeaway of all of this is not relying on sunscreen alone. You know what protected me the best during this entire experiment? The medical tape between the boxes and my shorts. If you're gonna be spending time outside, take advantage of shade, hats, UV protective clothing like rash guards. These will ensure that you're minimizing your exposure as much as possible. Heck, all of those suggestions are supported not only by the doctors, but also by the sunscreen manufacturers themselves. Even the anti-sunscreen crowds behind this one. Good to see that there is something that we all can agree on. Now if you'll excuse me, the crew needs me. We lost our chessboard a couple weeks back and they were hoping to use my chest to play. Glad my weeks of pain wound up being useful to someone. But hey, that's just a theory. A style theory. Keep looking sharp.